Hey bakers, John Cannell from Preppy Kitchen here, and today we're making a vibrant and tropical shrimp ceviche that is simply to die for. It's perfect for warm weather and an anytime snack. Okay, let's get started. First off, we have some juicing to do. This recipe calls for about six limes, two lemons, and an orange. And in case you didn't know, a ceviche is cooked through acid. Here's the deal, I have to be a science teacher for just like one second. When you cook a protein, like be it eggs or you know turkey bacon, whatever, you're denaturing the proteins. The proteins have like a very specific shape, which lets them do a special job. Our body is run by proteins. But when you heat the protein or expose it to an acid, you're gonna change the shape of the protein. It's a, called a confirmation change, and it affects the texture and everything else. Denaturing the protein cooks it, but it doesn't kill off all of like the bacteria or parasites or whatever that could be in the meat. So what we're gonna do is give our shrimp a really quick parboil, just to flash expose it to heat, get that surface nice and clean, and then we're gonna give it a bath of these beautiful fruit juices to finish the cooking process and change the texture to be really nice and palatable. I wanna end up with one and three quarter cups of fruit juices, so if we don't have enough after juicing these guys, we can add in a few more limes. And I know I don't need to tell you this, but always use fresh fruit juices. Never ever try and use those plastic container lemons or limes, they don't work. If you don't have access to them, just wait until you do, it'll be worth it. Tough little suckers. It's like juicing a coconut. <laughs> Didn't expect it to be this much work. The real talk is that I forgot to buy limes for this recipe, so I had to order them online, like with an online grocery delivery. And the perils of that are that you don't get to choose your own produce. It's okay, they're still full of juice and it's gonna be delicious. They're just remarkably strong on the outside. <laughs> this is really, really making me want to whip up a margarita, I have to tell you. Okay, let's see how much juice we have so far. One cup. <laughs> Gonna need some more juice. I have one and three quarter cups of juice. Let's get rid of these shells, peels. <laughs> and on to the rest of the prep. I'm adding a quarter cup of pepitas or pumpkin seeds onto a baking sheet, carefully. And we're gonna toast them for just like maybe 10 minutes at 350. Bring the flavor out and make them nice and toasty. <laughs> for this recipe, we're gonna use a cup of diced mangoes. To get that flesh from the mango, you can cut along the side where you know the pit is gonna be at the point, and then use a spoon and actually I'm gonna do this over my juice. So if I have any mango juice coming out, it'll go to use. Slide that spoon along the pit. Okay, didn't do the best job there, but you get the point. Now just score the mango carefully. Don't go through the skin. <laughs> then you'll go through your skin. Then you can invert it and you have your little sections all ready to pop out. Just continue the process until you have one full cup. This is gonna be about two mangoes. This is the safer way to do that, by the way, not in your palm. <laughs> if you wanna save on time or if you don't feel confident about this process, you could also just buy the pre-cut mango pieces at your, most markets. Hmm, my giant mango yielded a cup, how nice. No need for two mangoes, this can be a snack later. Before we continue our prep, let's deal with the shrimp. I have one pound of deveined clean shrimp from the market, very fresh. Use fresh shrimp for this. And then a big bowl of ice water. We're gonna boil the shrimp and then dump them in the ice water to stop the cooking. Stop the madness, people. <laughs> All right, let's pop these into that boiling water right now. Pop that shrimp in there carefully. Whoa, look at that color change. Give it a quick parboil, maybe like 40 seconds. My shrimp are in their ice bath. They'll hang out there for five minutes. And while they do that, let's get to chopping. So I have some beautiful watermelon radishes. Do you see how gorgeous this is? I was very excited when they were at the market today. We're just gonna slice them thinly after you wash them. You want about half a cup of radishes, and once you're done with that, let's get to mincing up a nice jalapeno pepper. You can use any spicy chili that you like, by the way. You're not limited to jalapenos or fresnos. Let's remove that pith on the inside and the seeds. 
I think they give you indigestion. Is that true? Let me know in the comments if you know for sure why we don't eat jalapeno seeds. I just do what my mom tells me. When you're cutting a chili, you should have the skin facing upwards. That way you'll get a cleaner cut. If it's facing down, there's gonna be a lot of pieces sticking together. I've learned this the hard way. That was my five minute timer. We're gonna move our shrimp now. So let's make some space on our cutting board. Take your juice and reserve a quarter cup of it. That's for later. And now we're gonna transfer our shrimp into their fruit bath. And then just arrange them so they're hopefully all submerged. That would be the best case scenario. Get down in there. This can be refrigerated for about 15 minutes until we come back to it. So we have plenty of time for the rest of our prep. Mm, this is gonna be delicious. You don't have to parboil your shrimp, by the way. That's really like a food safety issue. There's a lot of people who are very squeamish and kind of rightfully so about eating raw shrimp. I totally get it, even though at a sushi restaurant, <laughs> it's raw everything. So it's up to you. If you're worried about the parasites and things, go ahead and give it a quick parboil, maybe like 40 seconds. If you're not worried about it, just give them the fruit bath and you'll have a different texture. It'll be a little bit nicer, but life is about trade-offs. All right, I want a quarter cup of minced red onion, so slice them off. More beautiful colors, thank you nature. And then just get to cutting. This is not the right knife. This is a knife. No one would get that reference. There we go, quarter of a cup. Save the rest for an omelet or something later. <laughs> We're gonna have half a cup of fresh cilantro in here. Give it a nice rough chop. Try not to get too many of the stems on there. If you love cilantro like me, feel free to add more. And if you hate cilantro, you can skip it, but I understand, I understand why you don't like it. It's genetic, but you're missing out. <laughs> Just gonna sort through and like take out some of the more egregious stems. Now chop, 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 chop. You'll discover some more stems hiding in there as you chop. That's half a cup in my eye. <laughs> Not gonna measure it. We want one avocado diced. I'm actually gonna use two because I love avocado and these guys are a little tiny. Huh. Only a little bruise, it's okay. So peel the skin off of the avocado and then it'll make it much easier to dice. That's a cute avocado, even though the seed is like 20% of it. This one's nice and unmarred, but the skin is not coming off easily. Good amount of avocado, cilantro. Oh my God, it's so creamy. It's a really good one. Just taking the tails off because I forgot to do that earlier. I'm so used to having them like little handles, but we're eating this not like an animal. We're gonna eat with chips. So you can actually chop the shrimp up into smaller pieces, into halves. It depends on how you're serving it. If you'll be eating with a knife and fork, or even a spoon, you can have bigger pieces, but if you're gonna use chips and have this as an appetizer, you probably wanna dice the shrimp. And you would do that before the acid bath for maximum surface area being exposed to all those beautiful fruit juices. Once your shrimp have chilled out in the fridge for like 15 to 20 minutes, go ahead and drain them. You don't wanna have them in this acid bath for too long because the acid is cooking the shrimp so it will toughen them up over time. 15 to 20 minutes is a nice good amount to absorb some flavor and also finish cooking. I'm gonna assemble this in a big bowl so let's add our shrimp in, our beautiful watermelon radishes, Ooh, all that amazing avocado and the cilantro and my hands are like so covered in food. <laughs> but they're clean. And the jalapeno the diced onion, the mango. I'm gonna sprinkle on about a teaspoon of flaked sea salt. This stuff is amazing. I can add more if I feel like it's undersalted. Also it depends on how you're serving it because if you're serving it with chips that have salt in them, undersalt your ceviche. Now we can add on some of our toasted pepitas. And if you wanna make this a beautiful presentation, go ahead and reserve some of the avocado reserve some of the mango and the radishes and like sprinkle them on top for a beautiful presentation. If you're adding it into a bowl for a party, just toss and you're ready. Clank, clank, clank goes the trolley. 
And you can add in some of that reserved citrus juice as well, just to help the flavors along. Okay, that looks amazing. I'm gonna give it a try right now. That is so good. All of this is for me. I'm not sharing any of it. This is gonna be my dinner. Oh my gosh. It is the perfect combination of crunchy, creamy, spicy, citrusy, a little bit of sweet. Oh my goodness. And it's amazing on chips. I would eat this with a spoon, but this is like the perfect appetizer, especially for warm weather when you don't really wanna do any baking and just have like a fun assembly. This is like salad times one trillion. <laughs> If you like this video, check out my How to Make Fish Tacos. They are crunchy, amazing, and shockingly healthy. Oh my god, you would never believe it. I hope you enjoyed the video and you get to make this recipe. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.